determine if the planes x minus y plus z equals 4 and 2x plus y plus z equals 10 are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. If neither, find the cosine of the angle between them. First, parallel. So let's draw a picture of two parallel planes, like so. So one thing we'll note, the normal directions. So those are going to be the directions that are perpendicular to our planes. If we're parallel, note by the way I've drawn them, they're pointing in the same direction. So we have parallel. Doesn't mean that the normal directions are equal. It just means they're different by constant. So for instance, if we drew the normal direction in on this one pointing down, that's perfectly fine. All we care is that they differ by a constant. So that's my rule. So we'll check if n1 equals a constant times n2. Now, how do you get those normal directions? Well, if you look at x, y, and z, you just peel off those coefficients, put them in a vector. So for our first one, we get 1 minus 1, 1. Our second one, we get 2, 1, 1. Now, to see if there are multiples of one another, you could just check the x-coordinate and then see if it follows through. So if you note, n2 would have to be 2 times n1 if we just checked an x. But if you notice, okay, we're different here by a 1 and a minus 1. So we're off by a minus 1 there. And then here we're off by just 1. We're not off by anything. Point is, the 2 isn't working for the y or z coordinates. So we're not a multiple of one another, so we're not parallel. How about perpendicular? Let's draw the picture for two perpendicular planes. If you note, okay, we'll call our first plane, plane one, plane two. Plane one, the normal direction points straight up, so it's actually gonna live in plane two. For plane two, its normal direction is gonna point off to the right, so that's actually gonna live in plane one. Now, key point here is I have two vectors I want to check if they're at right angles to one another, like these two vectors are. I take their dot product. If they're perpendicular, we're going to get a zero. If we get zero, then they're going to be perpendicular. I take n1, n2, we take the dot. So the idea is going to be take your coordinates, multiply them together, add. If you get zero, then perpendicular. In this case, what do we get? We get a 2 minus 1 plus 1 gives me a 2. So these are definitely not perpendicular planes. Finally, looking for the cosine of the angle between them, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to take the formula for dot product. Okay, one way is to do this multiplication and add formula that we just did. Another way is to take the length of your first vector times the length of your second vector, multiply by the cosine of the angle between them. So we're going to use that formula to get cosine of our angle. Now, we just saw that the dot is equal to 2. So on the other side, what do we have? Well, n1, that's going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, gives me square root of 3 for the length. And then for our second one, we'll have 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, gives me a 6, square root. I get a square root of 6 for the length times the cosine of the angle. So our Cosine of the angle is 2 over square root of 3, square root of 6. I'll break up square root of 6 as square root of 2, square root of 3. Then I'll break up 2 as square root of 2 times square root of 2. Square root of 2's cancel, and I'm left with square root of 2 over 3 for the cosine. Now, if I want the angle, I just go to my calculator and use the inverse cosine function. So what comes out, I'll get 61.9 degrees, which is going to be the same as 1.08 radians. So you have to be really careful with the settings in your calculator to make sure you're getting your angle in the right units. Okay, to check on this, note, okay, if I take 60 degrees, which is pi thirds, the cosine that comes out is a half. For 61.9 degrees, you're getting a 0.4714, so we're in the ballpark.